There's a nice little button on the timeline now. So in addition to snapping, you've got this little button here, which turns off linked selection. Now, what is that? Well, you know, when you go to a, a clip like the join here and you grab hold of the video, it automatically grabs hold of the audio. Grab hold of that, it grabs hold of both because the audio and the video are linked. Now you can temporarily override it by holding down on the Alt key and grabbing, and then you could just do the video or just do the audio. For years and years I've done that. If I just want to trim the audio or video of a linked clip, I've just held down an Alt and then clicked. Well, now we've got this button. If you turn that off, when you go to a clip, it just selects the audio or it just selects the video and it stays like that till you turn it back on again. Again, nice little addition. Another interesting one we've got is this little thing at the end. Now I'm gonna make up a new sequence and I'm gonna go and find this sequence in the bin. It's just there, but if I didn't know where it was, I could right click on the tab and say, reveal sequence in project which then highlights the clip for me. I want to take this sequence and nest it in another sequence. Well, if you do that, you've got two options. With this thing on, you grab it, you drag it, you drop it, it becomes a sequence inside of a sequence. With this thing off, you grab it and you drop it, and it's no longer a sequence, it's a bunch of clips. If I put it in this way, I can go back to the original and I can change stuff. So make that longer, make that one longer, and whatever. And then when I come back to the sequence where it's nested, I can adjust this sequence, and it's noted the changes I've made in here. If I throw it in this way, it becomes a bunch of clips which are completely separate to what's in sequence two. So if I start to trim this lot, it doesn't affect what's on sequence two. There are times when I want to use both of those, which is why it's nice we've got a button for it. One of my favorite changes to do with sequences is up in the settings. This might be one of my favorite changes simply because I've been using Premiere since day one, since about 1994. And for ages and ages, I want to be able to change the settings of a sequence. And now we can. You go up to sequence, sequence settings, and I can change all of this stuff, which you couldn't do in CS6. And in fact, every other version of Premiere since Premiere one that I was first using in 1994. And I gave a little shout for joy when I saw that turn up. Yeah, in CS6, if you got the sequence settings wrong, you just started a new sequence with the right settings and copied and pasted everything from it. So it's not that huge, it's just actually quite nice to be able to do it. But it does mean I can change all sorts of stuff. The only thing you can't change on the sequence side, you can change everything to do with the video, but what you can't do is change the audio master track. Now, when you make up a new sequence, you've got all sorts of different settings, which define the video settings and the audio settings. Now on the audio settings, they actually say how many tracks do you want to start with, and you can add more tracks in and take more tracks off. But what you can't change is this. And this is the mast audio track. It's the one at the bottom that you very, very rarely fiddle with. But this defines the kind of sound that you're making. So if you start off with a stereo master track, then anything you make after that is gonna have a stereo output. Even if you say, make me a surround sound clip in the media encoder, it starts off with two channels and doesn't become surround sound. If you wanna edit surround sound, that has gotta start off as a 5.1 track. You want 16 channels of audio, then you choose a multi-channel thing and you type in how many tracks you want. You notice you can go up to 32 audio tracks in a sequence now. This, you can't change afterwards. So imagine I'd actually started off my edit and I say, oh, blast, I really wish I was editing this in surround sound. You'd actually just have to make up a new sequence, choose the kind of setting, but then go to the audio tracks and say, let me make a surround sound master track then go back to the original, copy everything, and then paste it onto the new one. If I go to the audio track mixer, you notice I have surround sound doobies so I can fly stuff around in surround sound. So you can't change everything through the sequence settings, but you can change a lot of stuff. I actually do use that quite a lot. If I'm doing an edit which is interlaced and I'd like to see what it's like as progressive, I'll simply pop up there and change the settings as suddenly it'll become progressive. 